Many toots. Dwarf Fortress. Generating a world. Before you can play Dwarf Fortress, you need to create a world to play in. Dwarf Fortress has one of the most in-depth and detailed world generation systems out there. From the main menu, select Create a New World. You'll get this message warning you that the game is still in alpha, as it has been for well over a decade and is likely to remain for years to come. Press Escape to acknowledge this, and the options will appear. The first is World Size. Smaller worlds are faster to generate and take up less memory, but have a smaller variety of places to visit and settle. If your computer is very slow, try the smallest options. The next option is History. This is the option that has the most impact on how long it will take your world to generate. The longest history may take several hours to generate on larger maps, but the shortest history means your world is very new, and there won't be many historical events, ruins, artifacts, etc. to work with. Do note that if the history generation is taking too long, you can always interrupt it and take the world with however much history has already been generated so don't be too afraid to select a longer history. Number of Civilizations controls how many different societies of dwarfs, humans, elves, goblins, and kobolds are generated in your world. More civilizations means a more crowded map, more interaction between races, more trade options for fortresses, but also more wars and invasions. Maximum number of sites is similar to the previous option. It controls the maximum number of towns, villages, fortresses, caves, and so on that generate in the world. Keeping this low will make the map emptier. Setting it very high will create a crowded map. Number of beasts controls how many large beasts are in your world. This includes things like titans, cyclopes, giants, ettins, and so on, as well as the forgotten beasts that live in the caves deep underground. Natural savagery affects the natural surroundings in the world. Savage biomes will have more dangerous animals in them, whereas calm ones will have fewer or even none at all. Finally, there's mineral occurrence. This might be the most important setting for your fortress. Very rare mineral occurrence means that each fortress you start is unlikely to have access to all the metals and other useful ores which you will need to craft weapons, armor, and other items. This is a challenging way to play the game. On the other hand, if you set this to everywhere, you should find all the ores and minerals you need just about anywhere you set out. Here are some recommended settings for new players. Now that you've made your selections, it's time to generate. Press Y to start the process. First, the game will generate the map itself, then add things like rivers and lakes. Then history begins. It places the civilizations and sets them off, creating historical figures, wars, peace treaties, famous battles, the construction of roads, the destruction of various sites, and so on, until it hits the year you specified in the options. If it's taking too long, you can interrupt the process by pressing Escape or Enter. Once it's ready, you can look around the world with the arrow keys or number pad, export a map and some information about the world by pressing P, Accept the world with Enter, or Abort by pressing A. If you abort, it will take you back to the Options screen, and you can make changes or immediately try again. Don't be afraid to generate a few worlds until you find one that suits you. Once you accept a world by pressing Enter, the game will export all the data, then take you back to the menu screen where you can finally select Start Playing. That's it, you did it! Bye!